We are all hungry people. We need shelter and strength. We are one in our hurting. We are one in our pain. In our suffering and sadness, we are saved by the grace of the power and the Spirit that is here in this place. We are gathered at table as one in the Lord. We are gathered as people who are living the Word. Our hearts and our spirits are nurtured by grace. It is Jesus who fills us. He is here in this place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We celebrate the Mass of Thursday in, in the tenth week of the ordinary time. In this Mass, pray for the repose of the soul of Augie Morales. As I thank God with all of you for your prayers and your support. And for the grace God has given you to continue to bear witness to him. I pray for you, pray for your families, and pray for those you intend to bring to the altar of sacrifice as we celebrate the Mass of this Thursday. Let us now take a moment in our hearts, acknowledge our sins, and ask God for pardon and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting descend what is right and by your guidance do it. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please. For the readings. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over the hearts of the children of Israel. But whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. All of us, gazing with unveiled face on the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory as from the Lord who is the Spirit. Therefore, since we have <clears throat> ministry through the mercy shown us, are we not discouraged? And even though our gospel is veiled, is it veiled for those who are perishing? 
in whose case the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they may not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slave for the sake of Jesus. For God who said, let the light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to bring to light the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. I will hear what God proclaims. The Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him. Glory dwelling in our land. Glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him, and salvation along the way of his steps. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, Whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever sit, says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there recall that your brother has anything against you. Leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother. And then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to cut with him. Otherwise... Your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released 
until you have paid the last penny. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I want us, my dear brothers and sisters, to reflect this morning on this Thursday in the 10th week of the ordinary time uh, about the necessity of removing the veil, pulling off the veil off our face to enable us to see the glory of the Lord. Taking the veil off, removing the veil. The understanding of this scriptural passage taken from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians could be culture sensitive or relative. To the people of Israel, whom Paul spoke about in that first reading, it can connect to their story in the wilderness when God had appeared to speak to them and it came like lightning. They were afraid and they covered their faces with the veil. They had returned to Moses to tell Moses, please tell God not to speak anymore directly to us. Let him speak to you or a messenger who can relate that message to us. So the cultural relativity of that message to the Jews, we connect to this story. To a typical Arab or within the Islamic culture. The veil over the face, especially to uh, women or ladies, is a, is a sign of honor, respect. But to a typical Western, covering of the faces may not make the kind of sense it could to an Islamic lady or to an Islamic family. So it remains relative, depending on how you want to look at it. But the veil over the face can also mean, signify shame. Shame about something. Shame perhaps about your past. Shame about what you could have done. How you may have related with one another. And that brings me to the gospel today where Jesus, in trying to explain the difference between the old law and the new, spoke about, not just about killing, but being angry with your brother or your sister. A few things can make us ashamed of ourselves. Maybe if in our past we had use some of those abhorred words, the S word, the F word, and some of the words that our law today prohibits, we become ashamed. Jesus did not talk about merely killing. He talked about being angry. He talked about calling somebody a fool. And he says, if you ever did this, know that Judgment is coming, and that might take you to the fiery Gehenna. That is the gospel. So in speaking about the veil today, the scripture tells us of the need to pull it off. I know to an Islamic lady or woman, that may not make sense. But taking the veil off significantly tells us today of the need to look at God, to look at each other, to confront ourselves with the challenges we may have had in our past and to see how we can do things differently, to look each other on the eyes and tell ourselves the truth of the humanity we share. So on this day, the responsory of us tells us that the glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. That is our prayer. 
we want the glory of the Lord to dwell in us, in our land, to change us, to make things better, and to move us in our relationship with each other. Because God has mandated us to build a better world for ourselves. And it is for us to pull this veil off our faces, to be able to see each other, to embrace each other, to love each other, and to let the glory of God shine on us and shine on our world. Please stand. With hopeful hearts, we lift these intentions to our merciful Father today. For church leaders, may God grant them clarity of vision in guiding his people to deeper holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. For government leaders, may God bring them grace and wisdom in working to protect the dignity of every human person. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who struggle with anger and forgiveness, may God transform their hearts by the power of his love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here today, may God open our hearts even more fully to receive his word and follow his will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, may they rest in the eternal light of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Augie Morales, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in the quiet of our hearts, you may offer your own special petitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we come to you. And as we offer you our sacrifice and praise, we pray for the forgiveness of the many ways we may have erred against you and against each other. Answer our petitions and bring us your love through Christ our Lord. The Lord has promised good to me, His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celi et gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray. That partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, John, and Ramon, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And may we share the sign of peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world of mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Oh, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ bring us to life the valor. God in him. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to what is right. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. Have a good rest of your day.
standing always by my side. You guard me from the fall, and you lead me in ways everlasting. Lord, you have searched my heart, and you know when I sit and when I stand. Your hand is upon me, protecting me from death, keeping me from harm. O oh Lord, I know you are near, standing always at my side. You guard me from the foe, and you lead me in ways everlasting.